folks, Brian Manzella, a Golf Magazine Top 100 teacher, here today to talk to you about the golf swing of Phil Mickelson. But we're gonna look at it a little different today. We flipped him righty. So the right-handed golfers out there, about 85, 90% of the golfers in the world are gonna be able to relate to it a little bit better. A couple things you need to know about Phil's swing before we look at it. One is he's playing opposite-handed. Like Johnny Miller's a left-hander playing right-handed, Bill Mickelson throws that 75 mile an hour fastball right-handed. He learned to play though, not only opposite-handed, but learned to play watching a right-handed swing. His dad's right-handed swing and he would just mirror it. Of course, they wanted to change him, but Phil resisted and it's a good thing that he did. So let's look at one of golf's most interesting and one day legendary golf swing. When we look at the swing of Phil Mickelson from the down the line view, I think there are a lot less interesting things in the backswing than there are in the downswing, but let's look at the backswing. Phil's got a slightly strong grip and a pretty standard address position. And then probably the only thing he does of note on the backswing is he rotates his left arm and club shaft unit a lot more than you would think he does, knowing that he never does lay the club off at the top. Phil has enough length in his backswing, enough height, his hands are fully over the top of his head at the top of the swing, and the length of that club going so far back that the club head gets lower than his chin at the top of the swing, that the club doesn't wind up laid off at all, and the club head winds up actually on the cross the line side just slightly, which is really good and sets him up for his very interesting first move down. That club head is so low, <laughs> because it's gone back so far and his hands are so high that even when he drops his shaft in the first move down, really, really low, almost hitting himself in the right shoulder as we look at it right-handed, this big, severe drop that you see in the early swing of Ben Hogan really doesn't have to have the club head drop so much with it because the club head was so far back. I think that makes it easier for Phil to control the ball with such a drastic dropping move. Don't take anything away from that move. It's very powerful when you can get the club that close to you and your hands still have a decent height. You're in position with a lot of lag to really use that lag in the second phase of the downswing, which Phil does wonderfully, where lots of people with that club so close to the shoulder would then try to drag the hands to the ball. Phil knows better and he's learned to get that club from really close to his shoulder to really high, that club head that was almost looking like it was gonna drop lower than his head, then springs upward off of that shoulder really fairly high considering how low the grip end of that club went down in that first move down. But that lets him get enough width to do, I think, the most interesting thing about the changes from Phil Mickelson's swing in his early years and the ones he's made since he's worked with Butch Harmon. Butch has taken Phil from dropping that club down to the forearm, where you see people, let's say, like Sergio Garcia and Ben Hogan add on a downswing and keeping the club through the shoulder, more like a David Toms, so that he can get the club head quickly outside of his hands and more online, giving him the opportunity to hit more fades when the heat is on. Now, as he goes through the ball, he makes what I think is his signature move. As we look at his swing, right hand, you're gonna see the left wrist turn down significantly through impact and the whole arm turn without this wrist doing any bending at all. From this down the line view, club gets through his shoulder, on the line, straight really at the back of the ball, maybe slightly outside in on this swing and then he really turns the back of this front hand down and totally turns the club face to the plane at a part of the swing where a lot of people still have the face square to the arc. So let's look at the difference here. Square to the arc look, turn to the plane look. And Phil does this before the club head gets as high as his hands on the through swing. And then you think if he would just keep doing that, he'd wind up with this club face pointing down the target wedding ring up look, we like to say, but actually that club face that turns to the plane really, really soon after the ball, about as much as you're ever gonna see 
a PGA Tour player do it, doesn't turn any more than laying on the plane as he goes through. I think you're gonna find there are many usable traits in Phil Mickelson's swing, and just try to remember it the way I do. From the high hands top, close to the shoulder, off the shoulder, through the shoulder, in front of the hands, and then pull back at the grip. One more time from the down the line view. Hands higher than the head, close to the shoulder with the grip. High club head off the shoulder, through the shoulder, out in front of the hands, at the back of the ball or slightly across, pull the grip back, pointing back toward the camera right here with a flat front wrist, but never let that club face turn more than to the plane. I don't know if you're gonna be able to play that lob shot like Phil, but if you can copy a couple of those moves, you'll be able to hit some shots like them, and I guarantee you, you'll be happy with the result.